Welcome to Maths Appeal. I'm Bobby Seagull. And I'm Susan O'Kareke. And our mission is to spread our love of maths. Our aims for this podcast are to offer something informative, accessible and hopefully entertaining that will show how much fun maths can be and how it's not a subject to be scared but embraced because it's everywhere. And for everyone. And forevermore. <laughs> this is episode 10, Decimal System 10. Uh, and if you've just joined the Maths Appeal crew, have a listen to some of our earlier podcasts where we cover subjects like percentages, statistics and algebra. And we've spoken to some great maths guests like Alex Bellos, Simon Singh and Ken Cheng. We've been so lucky with our guests, they've been amazing. And this week, we've got the second part of our interview with Anne-Marie Amaphidon, doctor and founder of STEMETS, a brilliant social enterprise encouraging girls between 5 and 22 to follow careers in science, tech, engineering and maths. We've also got a maths puzzle. Yeah. And some maths trivia. Yeah. (laughs) Over the next half an hour or so. All the usual maths appeal goodies. But we always start with a discussion about a key maths topic. And this week, it's all about angles and lines. So let's get stuck in, shall we? Exactly. So every week, we approach the topic by looking at three sort of particular angles. The first one is, uh, what comes first to mind when you think of that topic? And then secondly, how do we teach this topic, introduce it to students? Mm-hmm. And thirdly, what we think are the common issues that arise when teaching this topic. So... With lines and angles, um, what first comes to mind for you, Susan? So the angle that I'm going to go at ah. <laughs> um, oh. is the relationship that angles have with turns. So uh, angles are actually a measure of turn. A lot of people, a lot of kids understand the fact that a full turn is 360. I don't really know why it's 360. But yeah, yeah. Ooh, but, but I can I can inform you. Yeah. I thought I thought I'd yeah. just drop it in there because I thought you might know actually. Um, but yeah, so 360 is a full turn, and then the relationship between full turn then half turn, which actually takes you to a straight line, which is 180. Again, numbers that most people are aware of but don't see the relationship between. And then a quarter turn, which is 90 degrees, which is obviously 360 divided by four, which we're kind of used to see the 90 degrees, the little um, the little square in the angle. Uh, and it's that whole, also that whole relationship between lines, which is a connection between two points, which creates a line. And then there's a wealth of stuff around that that creates effectively our geometry system. Yeah, and and we're talking about the three sixty. Yeah, so tell me, Bobby, what, why? So the essentially the Babylonians. So they used oh. a sort of a base sixty yeah. system of counting, um, and partly because sixty has lots of factors: one, two, three, four, four five, five yeah, six, not seven, ten, yeah, twelve, fifteen, twenty, thirty, 30 and yeah. sixty. You think of all the factors, all yeah. the numbers that go into sixty without leaving any a remainder. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then based on that, 360 came as a six lots of 360. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So and that's kind of where it came from. Yeah. And then the month sort of fitted neatly. So you've got 12 lots of 30. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then that's why with 360 degrees. So it is a bit arbitrary because there are, again, in maths, there's another system where there's 100 degrees per quarter. And then we've also got another one that's based on pi. Oh, the radius. So it becomes, yeah. it becomes that 360 is actually 2 pi. So again, 360 is what we use. Generally. Yeah. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. So yeah. So with that, then we've got that relationship of the turn and then the lines and then the angles. And then in school, we have these massive areas of it where we're looking at how lines that intersect with each other create angles and the relationships kind of between them. We're kind of everywhere. Yeah. So that, again, when you have intersecting lines, and you can have potentially perpendicular lines or two lines never meet. The greatest sad love story in mathematics: two lines parallel that, lines. That, yeah, two lines that. <laughs> Heading in the same direction, but never meet. Oh, their match profiles haven't crossed over, no. which is a shame. Oh, yeah, sevens hate that joke. Okay, <laughs> I think it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we're math teachers. <laughs> um, so it's 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 a it's it's a branch of it's a part of geometry. Yeah. So the whole like with geometry is a huge area which we'll be kind of looking at as well next week. It's the mathematics that deals with the measurement properties, the relationships of points, lines, angles, surfaces, and solids. And so it's so it's really massive because it's looking at how we measure them and then how that interacts with the world that we're kind of in. And it's about trying to get students to acknowledge that. Sadly, sometimes when we do it, it's very much just about lines on a page, yeah. which isn't very like, why do people do that? But then if you think about the buildings we live in, you know, it's all about angles and structure. And if they didn't work, if they didn't, if people didn't think about how, like, like safety and how different things connect, we wouldn't be living in a safe world, really. Yeah. And what I like about geometry is that 
sometimes students maybe with things that are number algebra related they think oh it's just it's maths but with geometry i think it's it is related to the real world because we see it you know on your desk mm-hmm. the angles there the the door we come through again the buildings you talk about so geometry while obviously there's a there's mathematics behind it it is something that you see aesthetically op- yeah, in the real it can world. have a massive impact as well like with regards to be- like things that are beautiful design you know yeah. loads of the things that we in, we're in a day and age now where things don't look nice people don't want to buy them yeah so people aesthetics of uh, how things look how angles kind of cut certain things of the eye line have a massive impact on whether people you know want to buy and consume so does that impact how you teach the subject do you try and connect it to real world geometries or do you try and say okay we need to learn these basic sort of facts first I generally start with the whole as i say the connection with return and getting the kids to understand uh, the relationships and then bringing in the whole idea of parallel lines and intersections there but then getting them what is incredible now, which I, we didn't have when I was at school, are these um, dynamic, ge- like di- dynamic geometric programs that you can get online. They're free things like Desmos and GeoGebra, where they've got incredible visuals that you can put on or the students can even interact with, where you can do things like changing the points. You could have parallel lines, a line check, crossing through it, and you can effectively, and it's animated so you can see what happens to the angles as you shift it. They can do rotations so you can see what it looks like on the other side, which if you're doing it on a whiteboard or even a blackboard when we were younger, mm. you just had to rely on someone's visual perspective and how some people are really good at seeing things visually that come out and some people who really find it difficult. But what's amazing now is technology has taken it to another level where things that used to be static can now be dynamic and it can really help the understanding for whoever the student is. Yeah, so in theory, it means that we can actually progress through the topic at a, at a faster pace because you're not spending ages drawing things again and again. Mm. Kids can, I don't know, again, that, again, we talked previously about circle theorems. Yeah. Uh, and again, this is a topic where historically it's taught just you have eight diagrams of circles with different shapes, you know, triangles and in the middle quadrilaterals. Of but with uh, software like GeoGebra, mm-hmm. you can actually manipulate this uh, online, as it were, and kids can see things moving and they can see, ah, oh, suddenly things will click, I think, more easily for them. And also they can see that it works for every single different type of circle and every single different type of angle within that circle, which helps with the connection and then helps with the memory of that. And I think, you know, again, we'll put links to these programs so you can sort of see with George Brewer and Desmos and we can think of any others. We'll put them on um, our Twitter and Instagram at Matt Appeal. But it's, it's that thing of trying to bring the concepts to life so it's very easy for it to be very dry but actually they're using they can be used in a very very like creative way but i think that's where technology really does come into to play that can really revolutionize how you deliver or learn about this topic yeah although do you find because the exams are still on paper mm. by hand so they're learning all these amazing uh, ways of manipulating angles and lines using technology yeah. and the exam is still using your hands and I agree with you, but I think the big issue a lot of students have, a lot of people have, is that they don't have a concrete, like, deep understanding of what's going on. And I think actually these programmes can be really, really good at helping click that understanding. And then, obviously, they need to know how to sketch and draw and uh, be able to sort of, like, use things like measuring, using a protractor. Well, the and- things that we shouldn't often assume that because in year seven, sometimes you think, ah, oh, they'll know how to draw a straight line. Oh, no. They- yeah, yeah. You, you've actually got to teach them. This is what a straight line looks like. This is what a para or perpendicular line looks like at ninety mm. degrees. You can't assume that at all. I think. Well, I think, I think that's. I think that's with any type of topic when you get, especially students in year seven, you mm. don't know what they kind of know. But tools like uh, rulers and protractors and compasses were things that. I don't know whether they were used more back in the day, but definitely now students don't really understand the point in it because, you know, you've got apps that can do stuff and how often do you actually draw a line and an angle for day-to-day life? But it's necessary for the exam. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's going from the understanding, the visual dynamic stuff on uh, like on a techn- technological app or something to getting the students to then connect that with what they do with a pen, pencil and a paper and a ruler and a protractor. So they understand they are connected. It's just one's a bit more dynamic and one is them doing it themselves. Exactly. Analog versus, well, analog interacting with digital. Mm. And uh, perhaps getting the skills of people that might be our future architects. Yeah, well, exactly. Uh, yeah, very much so. And all like 3D designers, you know. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, it's trying to bring it to life because actually I love that relationship when you see it, like, 
when you've got so parallel lines and you've got one angle and you from one angle you can work out all the other ones because of knowing the relationship very satisfying it's incredibly it's like it's like a puzzle yeah, it isn't is. it, it now is. I, yes whenever I deliver it I'm like you've got one find them all and it shows that they understand the rules but then once it they they know it it's an they feel great working it out yeah applying all the rules logically I think it's puzzle time Bobby puzzle time all do, right do you like triangles oh I do. I love triangles because also it tells you what it is in the name. It does. Triangles. There's three angles. Simple. It, you know what? I've never thought of that, genuinely. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm here <laughs> honestly, for you. You are. Honestly, that mind blown. Genuinely, I've never thought of triangle. God. Well, honestly, well, you've helped me. You've educated <laughs> yeah, yeah. me. I'll give you this now. Well, do you know how to spell the word isosceles? Oh. That's yeah. going to be in our puzzle, that's why. Do you want me to say it? Yeah. I S O S C E L E S. I sausages. I sausage. That's how I rhyme myself. I sausages. I sausages. Correct spelling. So we're going to use an isosceles triangle in this particular uh, puzzle. Mm -hmm. uh, so an isosceles triangle is where we've got uh, two sides of equal length, and the other side is obviously not of equal length. So we are creating a pizza slice in the shape of an isosceles triangle. Mm, yummy. Delicious. Pepperoni isosceles. Um, so in this particular slice, the two base interior angles are twice the angle of the top interior angle Wonderful. in this pizza slice. So your question is, just work out all the internal angles in this isosceles pizza triangle slice. So one more time. So isosceles triangle, two lines are the same, one isn't. Yeah. Okay. And then what's the... the so in this particular one, the two base interior okay. angles of the isosceles pizza triangle Wonderful. are double the top interior angle. So your puzzle is to work out all the different angles in this pizza triangle. And you're not allowed to get a real pizza. Oh, that's a shame. But can I draw a diagram? Because I'm you probably going to do that. Diagram. Fantastic. All right. Well, as you are thinking about that and working out your calculations... Um, let's hear the second part of our interview with Dr. Anne-Marie Maffedon. So last week we heard about Anne-Marie's amazing math story and how she passed her maths and IT GCSEs at the age of 10 before going on to study maths and computer science at Oxford. This week we're going to find out more about the social enterprise she founded, STEMETS. So just to bring you back to speed, while Anne-Marie was at Oxford, she interned in banks every summer um, when she graduated, she was offered a job in one of them as a business management analyst at one of the banks. And in 2012, she's invited to go to America to speak at a tech conference about what her team had been working on. And here's where things get a bit interesting. And there were 3,500 women at this tech conference. 3,500? 3,500. Oh, wow! You've you got to take your seat again. There were 20,000 women at it last year, the same conference. Oh. So we went to the, so and then and again I'm not one of these people that pays attention to too many of the details to be honest. <laughs> so turned so I didn't realise that's what it was. So I kind of turned up at this conference and was like, oh my goodness, there's three and a half thousand technical women here. I've never been in a situation like well, this in my life. life ever. And the only other situation I've now been in was when I went back to the conference because last time I went there was like fifteen thousand women in this conference. I was like, oh my goodness, that's like a thing. Like, who knew? And, and you were part of this? <laughs> yeah. Like, and, then, and then it's like, it sounds silly. It's like, I never knew I was a woman in tech. I've always loved technology, always loved the maths, always been a girl. <laughs> right. But I'd never drawn the three of them together to be like, oh my gosh, you're a woman in tech. I've never been like, oh, I'm the only girl in this room for this part of my course or for that module. I've never been like, I'm the only girl mm. in this room for the exam that I sat when I was 10. I'd never been like, oh, I'm the only girl in this room for such and such meeting we yeah. had last week. Because I'm looking out on everybody. I'm not looking... In. Yeah, yeah. So I don't spot the odd one out. I just enjoy See. life and pay for my flat and, you know, <laughs> life's, a, life's good, right? So I was like, gosh, this is crazy. Like, a, There's such a weird sense of belonging here. Mm. Um, the keynote had spoke about the fact that the number of women, and this was for US only, but I later realised the same thing here, the number of women in technology specifically had been in decline over the last 30 years. Oh, so even yeah. on the back of the... You know, I'm in, a, I'm in this, here, but we're in a shrinking minority kind of thing. And still you're like, this is kind of emboldened by this thing, but actually it's getting smaller. And it's emboldened by it right? because it was so, it was like an experience. Like, I always say to everyone, you have to go. Like, there's nothing like being there and there being like Twitter parties and like Pinterest having a party where you have to go to like a hotel around the corner and say like a code word at the door and then you go up and like, <laughs> literally like, like, this swanky reception area and people are making like dream catches and there's someone like screen printing totes and you can like really view this thing and you're like and this is a tech conference 
And it's like, you know, you, when you invited to the drop box party, now I'm at the slap hop party. It's that <laughs> kind of thing where you're like, oh my gosh, like, it's like London Fashion Week. But, but for tech. Yeah, which is why we're saying that like, you don't get London, London Fashion Week. But anyway, but it's, it was really cool because it's like, if people knew, Yo. if anyone knew this was like a thing, like the number of people that want to go to fashion so they can be the fashion cat it's like, <laughs> this is, it is here in tech, no one told you, and there's only women here. It's like, even better. Just fun times. So, literally fun times. So I was like, <laughs> Someone's got to be doing this. So they came back to the UK and was like, huh, yeah, we've got the same problem. Mm. Physics is part of it. Mm. Maths is, to some extent, part of it. Computer Biology science, not as much, medicine yeah. not as much. Who's doing what? Like, what is going on? And so came back and was like, gosh, like, I lived that life. I love maths. I did technology. I did it all. No one ever reached out. No. There was nothing that was ever like, hey, you're a girl that likes this. You might want to come and... Join a gang or be a part of this or make a tote never. bag. No, <laughs> make a tote bag or a dream catcher or just chill out and enjoy mathsy things yeah, or math yeah. technicals or sciencey things. And I would have definitely have gone. And so I looked it up, and there are organisations. Not to say there aren't organisations, but then I was never a part of anything that yeah. happened with them. It was never reached me in East London. A girl that was in the press or like no one. It would never happen. Wow. So I was like, okay, what would I, what would you do? What is missing here? And so the first blog post, which is still up, was like, okay, cool, we're going to start this thing. I mean, I can't run an event for three and a half thousand technical women because I can't. But I'm going to do this for girls, at least, that they can grow up with this whole, I can be part of this cool mm. club, basically. And like, who knows, they there. could potentially take it further, you know? Um, but it was like, you know, we've got to create this kind of environment. The girls will come and enjoy themselves. Uh, enjoy and it. Enjoy it. And right. we can't do it by repeating what everybody else does. Yeah. So as much as curriculum is important, they go to school. We're lucky enough in this country that most girls are able to go to school. So I can't focus on the curriculum because they should go to school. Let's give them reason to want to do it when they're at school. Yeah, yeah. Like a, a, a positive bolt-on. Exactly. In a way that kind of encourages engagement in school, but also a looking outside the way. Because if I'm able to take any of them to that conference and they get to go to that Twitter party or that Dropbox party, oh. the memory of the Dropbox party we'll keep them going. And that carrot of if I just if I just crack this quadratic equation, if it's, I just yeah. crack integration, if I yeah. just crack it, whatever way I'm going to do it, I'm going to yeah. do it so I can go and live that my best life in that Dropbox party. <laughs> The girls will do it because they because they will, but no one's ever shown them that. You've shown yeah. them the fashion, you've shown them this, shown them everything mm. else, you've shown them Hollywood, but you've never shown them tech life or maths life or mm. saving lives is not just go and do medicine and see blood every day. There are other ways to save lives. Yeah. So that was how Stemets was born. So it was a couple of ideas that I was like, I'll try it, we'll see how it goes. I called it the Stemets Project originally. Mm. It escalated. So it's six years now, five. It was six years, yeah, six years actually by the time, by the time to go out. And it's, it was a monster. At first, it was a monster because I was doing it alongside my main job. And it was like, because wow. running events, I'm just like, hey, that person will pay for that food, da da da. That person will give us the venue, we'll just run it, and see how it goes. And then all these people turned up, and it was like, oh my goodness, like, okay. Wow, so people turn up when you run events. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they all enjoyed it, so maybe, maybe I should do another one. And so it just it came like that, it went like that. And then by the end, by December of the first year, we at number 10, explain to them how it was. I was on Downing Street. Da, 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 yeah. The number 10 next to the number 11. <laughs> and there's nothing next to that. It's, it's no, it's just this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which I also learned that, that yeah. I was like, with the rest of the street? Um, so it was there, a cabinet office, explained to them what we've done, just part of this big round table of like, you know, there's a national crisis, don't have visit teachers, don't have this teachers, da, da, da. what can we do, what should we do? You know, you're the insurgents, you've been doing this for a year, what have you learned, kind of thing. Me being like, oh my gosh, as if I'm here. And then at the end of the year, I was like, I'm just not going to do it anymore. Because I really enjoyed my job, really like doing that. This was like, a monster that was just growing and like running away with itself so I was like I'm going to leave it and a couple of people were like no 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 you can't what do you need and I'm like well someone else needs to do this because I already have a job right yeah and so that was how we made our first hire and then oh, it's just wow. still like that now where it's like people reach out to us and want crazy things and we're like okay cool we want to run this event you're doing this full time right I'm now doing this full time okay yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it, it's one of the things that it, it grew from running smaller versions of what I saw at that yeah. US conference Tweaking them slightly because we're in the UK and it's younger girls, mm. and then people being like, "Oh gosh, it's crazy! Like you just let them, just let the kids sit on the computer and build what they want." It's like, yeah, freedom, yeah, because right. it's all about creativity. It's not about curriculum. It's not about, you know, there's, a, if, there's enough things they need to learn. But if you give them a small bit, kids will go. Kids, kid, yeah, kids wow. are like that, right? So it's that, and then also getting them to meet these people because you 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 probably have sat next to a scientist three times this week on the bus on the way to school. That you knowing. didn't know. 
because they don't have big lights and they don't that says I'm a scientist or scientists are on the head or they don't have the grey hair the white hair and then the white lab coat on but then also they don't know what, what they do Yeah. and so this is the other thing we used to measure we were still measuring measure impacts we measure we ask questions before we ask questions at the end and um, maths is slightly better than engineering because they do it at school yeah so we say so it's things like um, do you like math science do you like science tech so is this what you do with the, the yeah, anybody the, that comes to any of the events cool. at the beginning normally will say do you like science technology engineering maths do you know someone who works in science technology maths do you want to work in science technology maths and do you know any women that work in science technology maths mm. so it's like the 16 kind of questions that we ask for quite a lot of time it's really funny because maths then you ask what what can you do what are jobs in these and they'll say scientist mm. technologist engineer Mm, teacher. teacher science teacher yeah <laughs> and, then, and then you go back through the teachers right it's really funny because it's like okay there's other things you can do and most people haven't or haven't consciously met someone that does maths well the thing I did a degree in maths and I've people who are in my course who are mathematicians yeah. but I'm not in Edinburgh anymore I don't know them so I've, I don't really know many mathematicians no because like, I'm, I'm not a mathematician, I yeah. can do... So it's that weird thing well, of you like... you are a mathematician, but you're not a paid a, mathematician. A paid mathematician, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's that thing of that like, actually, there was a bit of a disconnect. I think actually a lot of math teachers don't know that many... Well, and don't not, share the applies A lot of teachers yeah. don't know what's going on because they're doing their own job. It's the same <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, people only know teachers as this because they went to school once, otherwise you wouldn't know no. that teachers was a thing, right? So it works both ways. Um, just what I always say, like, if we had an extra day in the week, we'd do what we do for teachers. If we were given a million pounds tomorrow, or it was like less than a million, we'd do a thing for teachers to be like, hey, guys, like, because that's the thing. You need to know, you also need to know well, that, what happens next. I, oh, that's something I think we should talk about because I think that's one of the reasons we're doing the podcast. It's like, as a teacher who's passionate about spreading the, the, the word of mathematics as yeah. a subject, as a thing that it will and can and should enhance people's lives. There are moments when a kid challenges me and says, what's the point? And like the fact that I don't have an answer is outrageous, I think. Because I want to have one, yeah. and I actually I'm quite creative with some of the stuff I say, but like I'm making stuff up, and yeah. it's like, actually, there is a wealth of incredible stuff going on, and actually, who should be the first people to know this? Teachers, because they're the people who are hitting hundreds of kids every day. Yeah. But the problem is, if you don't have the time, where do you find it? That's true. You know, um, but yeah, I like it. You do need that resource. So it's... Yeah. It's a tough one, mm. um, because it's everywhere. But then, it, but then the other thing is, as much as teachers need to know, society needs to know. Yeah, true. Yeah. Everybody should know this. If you do English, everyone knows you become a writer, you become an actor, you become a this, you become a that. Mm. English and maths are the centre cool. of the... Do you know what I mean? So it's like, why well, everybody should know, you know, as a mathematician or someone that's done maths, that's just a small part of the puzzle of, A, you and your life skills but also of solving what's, whatever the present day equivalent is of prime numbers mm. and being able to then impact further on. Everyone should know that that's a thing. Or planes, which is what uh, there was a lady called Laura Dancer. You know, she does that where it's, you know, what's the likelihood this plane is going to crash? And that's what they do. And they work out and they model all of that. And, it, and it's a crazy thing. But so many people are afraid of flying, right? So you, you need to, why not be that we need to be, yeah. lesson so you can be a person that reduces the likelihood of crashes happening? Hmm. in certain weather conditions. Do you know what I mean? It's all these things where it's like, but that's all pinned together. Um, so it is part of what we do, actually. So in terms of what we do now, there's lots we do. We run events, we run programmes. One of the things is a school, is a school club programme that we have. The girls run themselves. But each week is centred on a woman, what she does, and then how that might relate to this uh, the curriculum. Right. So there are things that we have that we should maybe repackage and give to teachers where it's like... Yeah. How, how big, how many young people? 40,000. Six years. <laughs> and that's why they're programmed across the UK, Ireland, yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, It's wonderful. Uh, but that is girls themselves, which is, which is fun as well because you, you get to see them grow up. I think that's why we won't be them versus teachers. I think yeah, teachers yeah, yeah. are already grown up. Well, I'm not sure if all teachers are completely <laughs> grown up all of the time. Isn't that right? Susan? Yeah, I'm, I would agree with you, Poppy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, a big thanks to Anne Marie Maffedon for being a guest on Maths Appeal. She was so inspirational, like she has opened my eyes to just so much incredible stuff that's going on. Uh, and it really challenged me, actually, you know, like I think I said, I said in, in the interview, you know, I, I want to know more about how math is used in the real world. But there is a disconnect, I think, for many teachers. And it's incredible and wonderful that she's running an organisation that is doing that I just think there should be more connection between that organisation and teachers yeah because it's a question that we'll get asked quite often in lessons like 
miss or sir, what's the point in the maths? And I'd love suddenly for Amory to pop on my lesson and go, hello, I can explain the maths. That's not something we need. Uh, at least a hologram version of her that just pops up suddenly. But I mean, that's the thing, because I, as I said, I think I said in the, last, uh, in the last episode, that I think of myself as quite enthusiastic. Wow, Amory is super, <laughs> super enthusiastic. And I just think, actually, there's loads of teach- math teachers I've met who are wonderful people, but they need an injection of that. Yeah. Like, you know, it's hard. Our, our job is difficult. You know, it's one of the reasons we're doing this. We're trying to try and keep things fresh. And actually speaking to someone who has worked in industry with mathematics and is working with young people every day, and she says... The focus is enjoyment, not curriculum. Mm. Imagine. I know, I know. The reality is, as teachers, we want to inject enjoyment, but we've got a curriculum to get through, we've got exams to get the students ready for. So that's why things like her organisation, like STEMETS, really serves a purpose because mm. girls in our schools can go to an organisation, meet other people that are working in tech, and that really inspires them. So when they come back to our lessons... They're not going to really ask us, oh, miss, what's the point of uh, maths? They know, they can, they're the ones who probably can be telling us as teachers what, you know, you know where maths is used and, and, and what they've done themselves with the maths, you know what I mean? Which yeah. is incredible. So I think it might be time for my favourite part of the week. Hey, hashtag puzzle time! Hashtag puzzle. So the question we had this week was, we've got a pizza sort of in the shape of an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is two sides the same one obviously not and in this particular one the two base interior angles uh, of the isosceles pizza are the same uh, and they're double the size of the top so what are all the internal angles right so you have told me that the side two sides are the same and one isn't but also with isosceles triangles that means two the base angles are the same and one isn't Uh, and Key relationship that you need to be aware of to be able to do this is angles in the interior angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Yeah, and, and one quick neat way if you want to prove this, if you have a triangle mm. piece of paper, tear off the corners of the triangle, and you can make a straight line. That's quite neat. I'm going to show a visual of that. I do that to the kids all the time. Yes. Whenever I do it as well, I draw the triangle, I put the angles on, and when I start to rip paper. Children go crazy. Like, oh like, my god! Mister ripping, <laughs> and I was like, and then it's math and magic. So you yeah, show that it makes a straight line. It does. I will definitely share that on Instagram uh, at Matt Appeal. So, as I say, two base uh, angles are twice that of the top angle. So I've called. I'm using algebra for this. Ooh, okay. Right okay. Now. The top angle I put is x, and then the one base angle is two x, and the second base angle is two x. Correct. Okay. Uh, and then all together, that's five x's. That's five of the same unknown, and that equals. 180 degrees. So I want to find just one of them. So that's 180 divided by 5, which is 36 degrees. Mm -hmm. So our top angle is 36 degrees and our two base angles are 72 degrees. That's 10 points. I'll take that to the bank. Thank you very much. (laughs) So I suppose you could make it more difficult by playing around with the algebra as well, right? Yeah, you could do. Um, If I were extending this question, maybe you'd add other... Make it a compound shape. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is just a one standard shape. Mm-hmm. If you put other shapes, maybe put it inside a circle. Oh, wow. Yeah. The magic of maths. Exactly. It gets complex quite quickly, which is brilliant. So thank you for that, Bobby. But one more thing before we go. Can you please give us a maths fact from your book, The Life-Changing Magic of Numbers? So let's get on a time machine. You oh, ready? I love this. And oh, we're going to 300 BC. In okay. ancient Egypt, yeah? Oh, yes. And I you think. land in Alexandria, you know, you look around, oh. see the great pyramids of Egypt. Oh, it's amazing. They're uh, so big. They are. <laughs> uh, and actually, we come to the most successful and influential textbook of all time, Euclid's Elements. Oh, right, yes. So the facts around that. So this is a, um, a book of essentially 13 different books that lays down the rules of geometry. And it's attributed to uh, the mathematician called Euclid. And people actually estimate this book to be only second to the Bible in terms of the number of editions it's been printed. Oh, wow. Um, and actually, the, what's really sort of curious about this, people who are educated study from actually Euclid's works right till the early 20th century. And then, then people sort of amalgamated that into modern textbooks. But till like the 19, early 1900s, Literally was, let's get out Euclid's elements. Oh, so the book that he effectively wrote, which was given the same editions, nothing changed. Yeah, textbook for like 2,000, Oh, wow. Two, years. And nothing changed. Yeah, and then, and then about the 1900s, they're like, let's just put it into modern versions. Oh, uh, right. So Euclid's established. He's the core basis of our geometry system. Yeah. 
Thank you for that. Well, I dip my hat to you, Euclid. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, if you've got a Matt fact you want to share with us, get in touch. Uh, we're at Matt Appeal on Twitter and Instagram. We really want to hear some of your Matt facts. Keep Bobby on his toes. Uh, and next week, we're throwing shapes on the <laughs> dance floor and talking about 2D shapes. And our guest is machine learning scientist Catherine Breslin, who heads up a team of scientists who have worked with worked on a variety of projects, which is about kind of voice recognition and artificial intelligence. She sounds really amazing. Yeah, she's cool. Uh, um, so one more thing from us. So again, a huge thank you for your support. And if you've told your friends about Maths Appeal or given us a five-star rating, we'd like to give you a high five. A virtual high five coming out to you. And you've been listening to Maths Appeal with me, Susan Okereke, and the one and only Bobby Seagull. One and only. Uh, and the music's composed by Kelly Okereke. The image designs by Calix Davis. And the producer is the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful... I beat you this time. Jenny Nelson. <laughs> Do I have to do four next time? Yeah. <laughs> right. I hope someone gets that. If, just, if they've been listening to all of them, they'll be like, suddenly, at the end, it's just wonderful, 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 wonderful. wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> the extended edition of <laughs> Jenny, Jenny Nelson's tribute. Thank you. I'm going to keep that in. <laughs>